Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Kim Sandberg and with me today is Gina Simbita, one of our national educators. And we are here today to talk all things Capri, Capri. and stationary machines, right? Yes, absolutely. All right, well absolutely. why don't you, let's dive in. Well, um, so the Capri, absolutely in love with it. Mm -hmm. Um, we call it a stationary machine right. rather than sit down because as you can see I have it as tall for me to stand it. Some people exactly they just some people really want to sit but yep. some people really have too much energy yes. and they do not <laughs> want to sit. So um, we call it stationary because the machine stays stationary and the quilt itself will move. Exactly. Okay? Just yep. like the pen and the paper. Exactly. We're moving the paper for this one. Yeah. Um, so some of the features of the Capri, mm -hmm. 18 inch. Oh, so you're sitting so next to the Sweet 16, yes. which is our 16 inch, okay. And, and this is our other stationary machine. Right. And yeah, 16 inches of throat space, this one has 18 inches So we have two more space. inches, yep. just as big as many of the long arms. Yep. Um, and then we have a little bit higher top speed than we did on the Sweet 16. Right. Sweet right. 16 was 1800, and now this is 2200 mm -hmm. for those speedsters. I know, like me. Yes, <laughs> and then we have um, stitch regulation built in. Right. We have the choice if we want to be manual or yep. stitch regulated. Now the thing about the stitch regulation that came out with the Capri mm -hmm. is it's called an insight table. Right, Okay. because right. it's not actually the machine that has, right. like it's not, the sensors aren't built into the machine, they're built into the, the table. Exactly. So as we look at the table, there are two little sight holes mm -hmm. that will be reading the movement of your quilt as exactly. you go. And you can, you can set it anywhere from 4 to 22 stitches per inch. Which is awesome. And actually, you have basting stitches available right. as well. Right. So, you know, when we're talking about, we usually want to baste this mm -hmm. um, before we go to it. Right. There's many ways we could baste. Exactly. And so, one of them is actually using the machine, using which the is machine. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we have the choice of manual or regulated, and we mm -hmm. have choices of whether we want it to end needle up, needle down, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. Yes, We it is. have a um, low bobbin estimator, oh. which I really like. I mean, yeah. you the more you quilt you kind of can hear when it's getting empty but yeah. this kind of gives you an extra little thing to say you know what I'm gonna do this flower and I see that there's not much left right I'm gonna go ahead and change it exactly so yep. that works really well um, and then we also have within our regulated we have a choice of precision and cruise oh that's awesome. okay just just like all of our other machines right exactly yeah exactly yeah. You even have it, even though the um, Sweet 16, when you're looking at that, it doesn't show precision versus cruise. Right. It just shows cruise, but what is cruise at 0%? That's precision. It's precision, okay. exactly. So what, what, what is a cruise? When I pause and I'm still pressing go, mm -hmm. it continues to stitch at right. whatever speed we've set it at. Right. Okay. And this one shows a number, which is stitches per minute. Right. The Sweet 16, the Fusion, and the Avante show a percentage. Right. So yeah. if that's 1,800 stitches per minute and I set it at 10%, that's going to be going 180 of cruise. That's okay. math I can do. <laughs> so why do we want cruise? Oh, well, cruise helps you finish those points, right? Right. So when I get to a point, sometimes you, you notice that that bobbin thread pops up mm -hmm. and everywhere else it kind of looks okay. Yeah. You know, you're yeah, good. Yeah. It's just because you needed to take an extra stitch to kind of anchor that point down. Right. right. So that's where it's really super helpful. Um, it, it also, if I am doing, you know, tiny little micro quilting, mm -hmm. and yes, it's reading the movement, but there's not much movement. Right. So right. by having the cruise, so right. that even if I'm hardly moving, it's still going to add those stitches in. Exactly. Get those yeah. nice, so that your pebbles are actually round. They don't turn into little yeah. stop signs. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, okay, and then what else? Oh, we have a number on our screen that shows our tension. So oh, cool. all of the machines, except for the Infinity, you you adjust yeah. it by the screen. Right. But every other one has a tension um, dial over here right. that we just ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Right. And now we have a number that's associated with that. So, for instance, if I start with, you know, one kind of thread, mm -hmm. I write down that number in a little book. Yep. 
and then next time I go back to that thread, I start at that number. That gives exactly. me a quicker start to, to find that right tension. Exactly. It's not going to always be exactly the same. Exactly. But yeah. it gives you a great starting point. Exactly. And to say, you know, you know that you normally say do a half a turn and I don't remember offhand how many numbers that is if it's like 40, I, I think, something I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it just gives you an opportunity to just look at that number and go, okay, I'm going to go from 300 to 350 and try that whatever. Exactly. Exactly. And I will say um, I I installed like two machines, same machine, same thread, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. They had different numbers on their tension oh, because yeah. you can't you can't cheat off your neighbor nope. on nope. on what number to have that tension at. Okay? Exactly, it's it's giving you a reference number, but mm -hmm. that's for your machine. Yep. Okay. Yep. So um, that's works really good. Oh, the thing one thing I really love about uh -huh. this is the start stop on the screen on the screen I totally because agree because I have to say that's one of the things that happens to me the most when I'm on this is if I'm using my foot pedal my foot wants to start cramping up uh -huh. yep. okay yep. so I love that and and new to the Capri mm -hmm. with the insight table we have the start stop whether we're in manual or regulated right that's the, so, that's one of the differences between adding the insight table to the suite, right? Yes. We just have the on off the well, on the screen when we're in regulated. When we're in manual mode, we do not have that option. Right. Then exactly. we have to use our foot pedal. Exactly. Now, the yeah. the way that I would um, get around that, mm -hmm. okay, is I'm going to when I get my machine, I am going to find out what speed is in manual is good for me, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So let's say I normally run at 600. Okay. Okay. So I might, if I wanted to use that and be able to use the on the screen mm -hmm. on off, I might go to man the regulated uh -huh. and then set my cruise mm -hmm. to like 30%. Yeah. So that it basically is always in manual because it's going the speed that I like whether I'm going or not. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good tip. That is yeah. such a good tip. So if you, you know, if you want to kind of go at manual but that what's nice about that even with this if I set my cruise at what what I would normally go at manual uh -huh. at regulated basically it's in manual right because I'm comfortable with that mm -hmm. but every time you do that big sweeping yes. curve that you really comfortable with doing yes. that big sweeping curve so suddenly you get really big stitches if you're in manual right that's when that stitch regulation will kick in for you exactly. and help you keep those even exactly. stitches. And I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I quilted on my home machine for years and that was always my, I felt like yeah. that was the bane of my existence was trying to get the top of those curves to have the same Getting stitch. yourself to slow down yeah. on yeah. those ones you're comfortable yeah. with. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And that's where stitch regulation is just so awesome with the stationary Absolutely. machine. And I mean, I'm, I've got to say, because I did do, like you, yeah. a lot of home sewing machine on, uh, quilting on my home machine. Yeah. To get one of these, oh. if if I don't have room for the big 8, 10, 12 foot uh -huh. frame. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, this is. I mean, when I sat down on on, I think I said to obviously sat down on that one first because yeah. it came out first. Yeah. It was like I was going home. You yes. know, just yes. to to feel comfortable, just yes. like you were on your home machine. Exactly. Exactly. I always, you know, I I know I've talked to some people that have quilted forever on their domestic machine, and they're scared of the frame mounted machines. Because they're like, I don't want to have to relearn anything. Well, the Capri is the perfect machine right. for that. Because right. you don't. If you're comfortable doing your, and it's just easier. easier. Yeah. So much easier. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was like going home. I think this one, this, I don't know if you can see with the little flowers, but I did a lot of background mm -hmm. kind of texture work. And mm -hmm. that was like one of the first quilts that I did when I got my oh. my stationery to kind of practice. Yeah, it was, it, it's, it's awesome. so fun to work with. So fun. Yeah. So, so fun. Um, you know what I want to talk about yeah. is a few of the extras that you can get oh, on yeah. the Capri, yeah. okay? And like we said, you can get the insight table for your HQ Suite 16 yep. as long as it was true stitch ready. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, it has to have the insides that are ready to work with the stitch regulation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you, you, when you buy a package, obviously it's the machine, the table. Mm -hmm. 
the bob and winder, which yes. I love that. Yes. And I don't know that we've talked about it, but you have the nice big M class bobbins yes. on any of our machines. Uh, yes. Nice and big you bobbins. Can use, you can wind your own bobbins or you can use pre wound. I, I, like I use some, both. I was going to say I'm the lazy quilter that always uses them, but yes. <laughs> I will say I'm tending more towards pre wound, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, a couple things that you can get for this. Mm -hmm. What's nice is just the smaller size table, 32 by 36, can mm -hmm. really fit in any corner. Yeah. I had one room where it really, you would have thought there's not room, but I made it fit. So um, awesome. you can fit it anywhere. But if you want to do big quilts, oh yeah, you, you can do them here. But sometimes it's nice to, to not have the quilt falling off. And yes. so yes. we have the table have, extensions, right? You can get one or both. Exactly. That adds an additional 18 inches on here. Yep. And if you're doing something like this and you maybe just need to um, move it. Do I do both, both of them? You have to do both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they do go up and down really easy. Yeah. You just absolutely. Two little, two little latches Super that you easy. click and yeah. it, they just folds right down. And you can decide after the fact to add Oh this. yeah, absolutely. Don't have to decide right then, yeah. but if you like have one now and you realize, oh, I need that extra room. Um, we can get casters for these. Yes. Okay. So, especially if you like to use this and you're going to bring it out to the center of the mm -hmm. room, do your quilting, fold it back down, tuck it back in the corner. Exactly. Wonderful. Yes. And the, the casters have little locks on them yes. so that it won't move. Which is really nice. The <laughs> other thing, yes, absolutely. I have that on all my machines. Um, the other thing you can get is a little drawer to oh. add on to there. Absolutely love that. Yes, it is. It's um, so nice. You can get one or two. Yep. Let's see, what else? Oh, well, any of the feet. Yeah, absolutely. That you can use on any of the big machines. Any uh -huh. of our long arms mm -hmm. can use the feet. Yeah. So, yep. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do I all mean, kinds of things. Couching was our first set of feet that we came out with, which I absolutely fell in love with. But right. I absolutely love any of the feet. And when you first set up your machine, you get it, you want to set it up so that the table and the needle plate are in line with each other. Right. So that when we're using rulers, mm -hmm. super easy. Smooth. Super easy. Yep. Um, I guess another thing I saw is in our drawer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We can get. We've got the paddles and the sweet spots. Yeah, right? we've got paddles and sweet spots. Yeah. Which are great for helping you because some people they like get this death grip mm -hmm. on that quilt to help move it around. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So this makes it able, able, easy to grab. Then I am just kind of putting my palms on here and can just move, move the it. quilt really easy. Yeah. So. If you find you are really tense. And you're doing the, with your fingers, and if right? if you see white knuckles showing <laughs> yes. up, that tells you, okay, we're going to need some intervention here. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yep. And so you have the small sweet spots or yep. you have the paddles. Yep. And um, you end up putting this on. So if you really didn't want that little ball, you yeah. didn't have to. Yep, but it's kind of giving you a hoop area to move that around and do that quilting. And exactly. super easy to, you, yeah. know, you know, you don't have to do a clamp or anything. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried using um, these with a ruler? I have, and yeah, I probably wouldn't use the bigger ones, right. but the smaller ones also, if you have just, trouble grabbing yeah. and you're seeing those white knuckles, by doing that just helps you grab it and move it. Yeah. Because when you're doing rulers on the stationary machines, when we're doing it on the big ones, the ruler is staying stable and we're just moving the machine. Exactly. This one, we're moving the ruler and the quilt right. together. Right. To do the ruler work. It's a little a little a little more stuff, for lack of a better word, to move. Yeah, right? it, and, and anytime we do ruler work, yeah. you just you just have to get used to doing it. Exactly. Okay, exactly. nobody is good uh, well, near nobody is good the first time they do it. Okay. Right, right. So you're going to practice and the more you do it, the more, the more comfortable you're going to feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, I'm Johnny. I just want to let you know that starting in July, we're going to be moving our HQ lives to Tuesdays. It'll be 12 o'clock PM and once a month. Look for us on YouTube and Facebook. We'll see you there. 
You know, I just want to tell you that I don't normally quilt from the side oh, of this really? machine. Are you sure? Are you yeah, sure? No, no, no. But I bet you in your studio, you don't have three cameras looking at you. I bet that they're exactly right. Yeah. And we need to make so sure and get a good So we're trying angle. to make it so that you can see what you're doing. If I am quilting at home, I am in front of it. Yes. I am, I have it at a height where it's like 90 degrees, so it's mm -hmm. comfortable because you, you don't want to yep. have it up where you're, you know, shoulders. hunching your shoulders and you don't want to be trying to press down too hard. So you want it at a comfortable height mm -hmm. and you're either sitting or standing at it. Yep. Either way is fine. Um, but we just wanted you to know that, that we do not stand on the side machine. Yeah. Gina doesn't so. usually quilt from the side, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> The other thing I want to tell you about the Insight table that I just realized, well, one thing is underneath in our oh, Bob and yeah. Case yeah, area, it, it's lighted. Yay. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. Um, and actually talking about light, we because of our filming, we don't have our beautiful LED lights on, yeah. but they are through the whole throat. throat. And they're, Love it. they're so bright that if we turn them on while we're filming, it completely whites out that area. Like yeah, that is how like bright weird... they are. And it's really nice because they're actually adjustable. They're dimmable. Yes. You can adjust that brightness. So. Yeah, I have had people say, and especially um, sometimes when you do rulers, right. to have it reflecting off of there, mm -hmm. you, you have the option to adjust the lights. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. how you want. And there's, there's light in the throat space and then also at the needle because right. there's the little... There's a light ring, ring here, here and then LEDs in the uh, throat space. Yeah. Now, when we need to get to the, um, to the bobbin, mm -hmm. We can just get to it as is, but one nice thing about this table is we loosen these two little screws that are holding it in. There's two little knobs there, Yeah, right? two little yeah. knobs. And then I can slide this back and then I can see into there. Yeah, and you can see that, that we've got that, if you slide that out just a little bit more, I think, you can see that we've got that light in there. Oh yeah. And it's so and you, easy. Can you see, it is not normal, at least it looks like it is to me on the screen. It's not normally blinking. Yeah. That's, that has to do with movies. It's the filming. Yeah, filming. It's the filming. That's why we don't have the lights it on also. <laughs> it won't be blinking when yes. you're home. Um, one thing I noticed though, because of we need an extra little plug that, that our sensor, right. I believe it was called the sensor. Um, yeah, the, the two sensors yeah, there plug into. That plugs into it. I find when I'm trying to get my bobbin case out, mm -hmm. if I lift the um, little lever, okay. but then hold the lever, oh, okay, it just kind of is easier. Put your finger on both sides of that lever to help you pull it out. It just is easy to get, because you are kind of having to go a little bit around the sensor, um, but not a big deal. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you grab so it. So like when I grab it there. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. So just grab that and actually hold on yeah. to it as you're pulling now, it out. Now when I'm putting it back in, mm -mm. I want to have that back down so that I hear that click. That's exactly right. Yep. I want to make sure that bobbin hear case that is click. nice and secure. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Before you start stitching. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then when, when we're done, and th that will give us a good opportunity when we have this pulled back to do the oiling that we're going to do mm -hmm. after each bobbin. Yep. That little front ledge. Yep. yep. One little drop. Yep. Okay. And it's nice because Handy Quilter gives you the oiler that comes with the uh -huh. machine with the nice um, extra Long length. Spout. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So what else do we want to talk well, about? I think, I think we talked about all the awesome features of it. Why don't we talk a little bit about what you can do with the Capri. Mm, you want to see a few yeah, things that yeah, I've let's done? Let's take a look and maybe you can do a, even a little bit yep. of, you've got a sample here with a yeah, bunch of Yeah, and we can talk about um, what stitch speed and such yes. to do. Okay. Yes, we always get questions about that. Um, so like this is just a simple sample just to play with oh, something that's pre-printed, mm -hmm. okay? But to practice going around designs and to practice some little background um, thing. I mean, you could make them to frame or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. it's it's nice because it's easy. You, yeah, you haven't invested any big right. you know piecing no that you're all worried about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, love something like and, that. And and this one, so did you use a different foot on this one? 
You know what would work really well mm -hmm. is the micro. Ooh, the micro foot. And you absolutely can use the micro foot on yep. the stationary machines. So what the yeah. micro foot looks like just just barely. Like the foot's been cut off. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. So it's just holding there right in front the needles right in front of it. Yeah. Full visibility. You can do perfect little pebbles if you yeah. want, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I love that one. Now, I probably would say you know, make sure you're comfortable because that needle's right. right there. It is. It is right there. And maybe, maybe to use something like this so that you're sure your hands are out of the way. Right. That would right. be really good to, to yep. use those in together. Being aware. Um, this was just, um, oh, it's fun. Just kind of playing. Oh. So, you know, you just get yourself a fat quarter. Mm -hmm. Play around, practice yeah. different stitches. Well, and I love, I love that you just had fun with us mm -hmm. and just filled it in. Practice because you know I think that's one thing. Uh, people get our, the machines and they think, oh my gosh, I, I, how do I get good at this? Practice, right? Just need yeah. to practice. If you come to any classes or probably listen to any, any handy quilter video, practice, 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 practice. practice. Absolutely. And, and something like this is just fun to do. Yeah, and I mean, something like this, you could refer back to it. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, oh, you know, I really like that. Yeah. Actually, I keep a little notebook uh -huh. where it's like, something like this, I would draw oh. different things. And then I might put a smiley face next to the ones that I like. Oh, I and like a that. frowny face next to the ones. <laughs> that either <laughs> means so I didn't like it, I'd, I'd, or uh -huh. I'm going to need to do more practice till I get to a smiley face. Because I have a few that have switched from yeah. frowny to smiley. Yeah. yeah. Um, this also was like in a class, mm -hmm. you know, I would have people just do different designs oh, in so blocks to mm -hmm. just play. What a great idea. I mean, there's, and I love Handy Quilters Minute Motifs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're thinking, trying to come you, up with ideas. You need ideas. Oh, the Minute Motifs are perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. So one, one minute video, uh -huh. show a design with a finger. Showing you the stitch showing path. Showing the stitch path. Yep, I exactly. love it. Exactly. I love exactly. it. Exactly. And, um, I was telling my daughter that I was binge watching some of those and, oh, yeah. and she's like, binge watching quilting <laughs> videos? I'm like, my, yeah. friends, my friends always do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> of course. Um, this was, oh, I did fun. basically all the background quilting. Oh, so fun. And then added the flowers. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so that's so fun. So you actually applique these on the machine. Yeah, I did what we, what we call slaplique. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely love it. Slap um, it down, stitch it down. Right. Although behind the biggest of this, so uh -huh. there's three different petals, say, behind the biggest, I did cut a little bit smaller than the petal size of a piece of batting. Oh, so you To give it a little extra padding oh, in those flowers. That's yeah. awesome. And then I used my square foot to help me hold down mm. when I sewed that, those on. I love that. I yeah. love that. And something like this, you know, and especially the smaller projects like this, they're just so fun to mm -hmm. do because they're fast. Yes. They turn out cute. I know some people they like, well, I, I've made one for all my beds. Now what do I do? Small projects are yeah, wonderful. They are. And you know, I love them too because I have like a stack of them and then I have gifts ready to go Absolutely. for people. So. And I, I like to have different seasonal. Yeah, I mean, me too. For me, any open wall space is a spot oh, for a quilt. Fair game, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. if you sit still for any period oh. of time, you get a quilt on you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then this was oh, just, um, you know, beautiful the the dream big panels. We, yeah, we've seen the smaller version is called Kabloom, I think. Oh. And it's a it's a print that this size, and there's a couple smaller yeah. pieces in it, so it was a good. I had given, I had done the bigger version mm -hmm. of this and gave it away to a friend. Right. And so I still needed a sample. So I. Absolutely. Was just and, fun. And this is where, you know, a pre printed panel is such a great way to practice absolutely. on these machines because, once again, there's no piecing. You can just go in and have fun with it. I absolutely love it. You can't, you can't do anything wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The, the only thing I like to do is always have some sort of echo around the pedals right. to kind of give your eye a spot to know where one starts and the other ends. Exactly. Frame. Um, yeah. And I, having done a few of them, you know, yeah. some of them I felt like I did too big of an echo around the pedal. Mm -hmm. Some of them I did too small. You just kind of, yeah. everything's a learning experience. It is. It is. Well, and you know, I feel like I learn something every time I quilt. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just love to just try different things. It's so it's so fun. So we've got Are you going to show that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, I think I want to I really want to show this one. This one is so fun. It's from a challenge that uh, Brenda Grills did for us and she bought these awesome panels from Deborah Linker and it's called the she called it the do you see what I see? Yeah. And then she had a well, really cool pareidolia or something. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say can you say it? But it's supposed to be you, you're seeing some sort of figure in the Design, yeah, yeah, design. So I, um, I saw kookaburras, and I love that you put the little eyes on it. And you did the. <laughs> so is this? Um, did you use the couching for this? I needed this, or something it? because the you know with these dyes, the, there's a lot going on yeah, with all the is. different colors, and so I needed something to make your eye look at the kookaburras. Right. So actually, after I had quilted it, then I came back and did what's called bobbin work. Oh. So I put my razzle dazzle in mm -hmm. my bobbin and then I go to this side because ah. I've already quilted it. Right. So then I just follow that line again and, flip and it added just a little bit more gold. I could I could have stood to, I mean, I love couching, so I could yeah. have stood to do couching on that to even accentuate it more. Oh. I think um, it looks fantastic. But yeah, it was just kind of fun. That is so fun. Yeah. So fun. Bob and work. Oh. Now, we've got one big quilt back here. Okay. And this is always one of the biggest questions we get with using our stationary machines. How do you manage a really large quilt on uh, these machines? Okay. So we've got one here. Do you want to give us yeah. some tips on how to do that? Yeah. I'll pull this one up here. So we've got a nice big quilt here. Now, if you know you're going to, you can do any size quilt on, Absolutely. on these machines. Yeah. King size, oh, whatever. For sure. Absolutely. Um, if you know you're going to be one that's going to do a lot of big quilts, oh. the sides the, are great. The table okay. extensions, absolutely. Give yourself, because you don't want it to be hanging over mm -mm. and pulling on you, because then it makes it harder to move. Exactly. Okay? And then as we're getting to a certain spot now, okay, if this, this is not mine, they just gave, <laughs> brought this out because they said, oh, well, Kelly's. we have one that's, that's yeah. basted. If I was doing this on this, uh -huh. would I have this much extra, like right here? Um, uh, on no, the bottom? I would not. No, you don't. But we do need a few extra inches so that we always have fabric nice. over the inside okay, table. Okay, so, so stick with the maybe three inches. Yeah. Yeah, you I need, like that. You need at least so yeah. that, so when you're right up here to the edge, you still have both of those sensors covered with the fabric. So you're getting it, that nice. It stitch will regulation. still work yes. without it being covered on both, but it it's more likely to be accurate yeah. with both being covered. Yeah, and it's actually a lot easier to have the little bit extra because something to hold you have on something to. to hold I like on it as you're stitching on that edge, right? But see if you if you had this much. Oh yeah, this super is, easy for this to get folded in uh -huh. as you're stitching it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I would trim that off. So yeah, we would trim yeah. that off. Now this one, we didn't really talk basting, but I know we had yeah. it on our list. Um, yeah, let's talk basting a little bit for a this minute. This one was machine basted. Yeah. So big basting stitches, which big. you could even do on here. Yep, absolutely. When we're doing it on here, um, there is a, when we're in regulated, mm -hmm. we just go down, down, down on the stitch length because it can go from four to 22 for regular stitches. Right. But when we go down below four, we go to half inch, one inch, two, or four inch. And it has that B in front of it, right? Does it? Nope. Oh, no. Nope. Just says inches. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it's that nice big stitch. But so as you're moving yep. it, it's registering the movement, it would do a stitch every two inches, one yeah. inch, whatever. If we were in manual, mm -hmm. It, there is a B. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. We touch That's the B. Where I'm like, I yeah. swear there's a B on there. We somewhere. touch the B <laughs> and then it goes to seconds because right. it's on manual. So when you have it on, let's just say half a second, mm -hmm. you could have really big stitches if you were good at moving it <laughs> yes. big, or you could have smaller stitches if you didn't move it quite so Because when you're in manual, you're the stitch regulator. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Stitch. Mm -hmm. Um, I know years ago I used to sometimes do by that, by wow. regular needle and thread. Okay. Not on one this big, probably. Yeah. Um, pinning. Yeah. Safety pins. Safety pins. I've done that before. Yeah. And you just try to be aware and not run into them. Yes. Because it's not usually a happy day when that happens. No, no, no. Um, so, honestly, probably the best mm -hmm. way for this 
and also when if you were if you had a, uh, a little foot frame mm -hmm. for the um, the uh, the simply simply thank you um, spray basting oh yeah because then there's nothing getting in your way you're not catching on any threads you're yeah just totally free to quilt it exactly exactly now if I'm quilting this um, on my capri where do I start if I'm doing like an all over edge to edge design, where would you recommend starting? Do we start at the top and work our way down? Do we start in if the I middle? If I was doing an all, all over, I might, I mean, if you have it basted well, mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to stitch right from the very start, super tight, I might start at the middle yeah. and work my way out. Yeah. That's one nice thing about these is I can Options. start anywhere. Exactly. Whereas on the frame, I'm usually always starting top and working down. Exactly. Okay? Um, so you really can do whatever. If I was doing one where I might have like different layers of quilting, like I'm going to stitch in the ditch mm -hmm. to stabilize it, I might do all of that first. First, yeah. Get it right so that it's right where it's supposed to be, yeah. then add the detail quilting. Very good. Yeah. I, I would probably tackle it that same way. Yeah. It's kind of thinking in um, the layers of quilting. Now, if I'm a modern quilter, mm -hmm. um, I kind of have to call myself a reluctant modern quilter. <laughs> but a, a, nice <laughs> a lot of modern quilters will do a lot of pressing of their seams open. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Guilty. And <laughs> it, it does look nice and flat that yes, way. Yes. But we are not going to be stitching the ditch. Exactly. Okay. There's no it, ditch to stitch there, in. Yeah. You, you don't yeah. want to be stitching just where there's thread where mm -hmm. you pressed it open. So it's kind of good to have an idea before mm -hmm. you start your quilt. Am I going to need to stitch in the ditch as I look at this pattern? Yeah. Yeah. If I am, I'm not going to press open. Nope. Nope. That's exactly okay. right. Yeah. Thinking ahead. Yeah. Knowing when you're making your quilting plan. And um, another thing to talk about is the fact that if when you're looking at, you're looking at your design and your fabric and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and I am usually thinking about how to quilt it because that's what I like the yeah, best. I was going to say that's that's what we <laughs> that's do, right? That's my favorite part. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if it's a really busy fabric, oh, it's yeah. not going to show. It's yeah. not it's not worth. That's not where I'm going to put my effort. For right. instance, on this quilt, I might really want something in this this light area yeah. where that quilting is going to show. Is it going to show so much on this busy? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, unless I used a thread that was really contrasting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it's likely that I am, you know, spend a little more time on this. Mm -hmm. You still have to quilt the, the oh, busy yeah. spots because you want it to hold together. Yeah. Um, but that's what I... That's what you suggest. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I sometimes look at stuff that's a little busier as an opportunity to try something new because oh, I know that... Oh, I like it. You know. Good. Maybe it's a new, as a new pattern that I'm not as comfortable with because mm -hmm. like you said, the stitching's not necessarily going to show up as much. Just like Perfect. we talked about earlier, you Perfect. always want to be practicing. So. And I kind of like the busier backs yeah. as well. Me too. Me yeah. too. <laughs> I absolutely. I am. Uh, I I love a, me a busy back because then I just don't have to worry about. You're just you know, not attention. as worried about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's kind of disappointing if you've done a lot of quilting and then you look at the back and there's you can't see anything. Like this one's going to show. Yeah, it is. It's, it's going to show all the quilting. Yeah. So this might not be the the quilt to try something right. totally new. I'd probably mm -hmm. stay within my wheelhouse on this one. Yeah. Um, Busy backs are really great too if you're going to be changing your thread color a lot too because yes. they can kind of help hide that. Because when I'm when I'm quilting, mm -hmm. I'm wanting the same thread top and bottom. Right. Not necessarily the same kind. Right. Same color. Right. So um, and so if it's busy and I do have let's just say black and white, I'm going to have black and white on the back too because exactly. I'm going to use the same thread. Me color too. top and bottom. Me too. Yep. yep. And when that person says to me, I really want black thread on the top oh, and white yeah. thread on the bottom, I say, you need to find a way to talk that person out of it because yeah. <laughs> Well we you know what we always recommend, ask yourself, if I was hand quilting this quilt, what color would I pick? Oh, because I don't know if I've heard you, that. That's when good. you hand quilt it it's only one color all the way through. Right. Yeah, exactly. It just right. it just makes your life a little easier mm -hmm. to use the same color. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we're here to have fun. I totally agree. 
Oh my gosh. Who wants to stress about having black poking I, up with white on the top? I do not want to worry about it. I just want to have fun. Me too. Me yeah. too. Totally. Well, any other tips on managing um, large quilts? Um, I would probably do some rolling. Okay. So okay. you like, like to like, like you like as to roll I was, them up. If I was going to go to the center, I might Should kind we of put, actually put it up on the machine sure. and kind of give them a little. Them here, I can Let's hold move this these here. Out of the way. You can pop up that table extension. Yeah. You oh can yeah. That stuff to me. Yeah, and we'll. Right uh, okay. So we can just one click and we're yep up. So nice. Okay. And here's. And then, so if I was going to start with it, and mm -hmm. I was going to start in the center. Now, another thing we can talk about is marking it. Yes. Unless you're going to mark it with something that will stay there, like the blue that you're going right. to wash the quilt when you're done. Right. That kind of thing. If I'm using a stencil mm -hmm. that with a pounce or oh. something like that, I'm just pouncing where I'm at. As you go. Yeah. It's I mean, the... you could kind of plan it out and yeah. maybe give yourself some marks so that you know how the spacing is going to mm -hmm. be, but um, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, especially because when you are quilting on the uh, stationary machine, the Capri or the Sweet, you're actually touching the quilt a lot more. And so, if you do a lot of marking beforehand, and True. it is something that's going to rub yeah, off, yeah, it's going to easily, get handled for sure. It gets rubbed off. You're right. So you're I'm, right. I, I like to mark just before it goes under my needle. Yes. So oh, look good. at that. Look okay. At that. So see, we can just. Kind of roll that, yeah. and then if I was in that area, nice. To see that what a difference this extra side makes. It does, okay, doesn't it? so I might just kind of go like that, and I know one thing from a video of a Debbie Brown a while back um, talking about when you're sitting at it, mm -hmm. and if you know you have that quilt coming at you, she puts a pillow with some some of the clear plastic on top oh. of it to make it slippery. Oh, what a good idea. You know, rather than it kind of getting caught in your... Um, yeah, against your, your clothes. Yeah, 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 in your lap and stuff. So she would put that on her lap here so that it's easy to slide. But I could even, see, I could just kind of roll this and have that right in front of me and do that. Now you want to... You don't want to have to be rotating the quilt, you know, right. like as you're going around a block. That's the whole wonder of yep. this is we can just go any direction. That yeah, like that. Yeah. But um, you have the opportunity if you want. Yeah. You know, if if there's hardly any quilts here and you have a lot down here, you could rotate it and yeah. end up having the bulk of the rolled stuff up here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I know for me, when I started quilting on my domestic machine, the rule of thumb I was given, never more than half the quilt inside the throat space. So I always try to do that. It just seems to make things a little more manageable. Okay. Sometimes I forget, and I've got more smushed up here, but with a bigger machine, with I was going to say, space, are you okay. sure that wasn't for your well, it domestic? Well, it was on my domestic yeah. machine. Yeah. But I on think here, you, you you have room. It's not as big of a deal. If you yeah. needed to, if you could get it rolled up and out of the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, you absolutely. got room. Absolutely. And I could see for sure I would really like to be using yeah. these because that just helps you hold the, that whole quilt because yeah. it's bigger than, you know, your little the little back quarter sample. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the stuff so that you do with just you your gloves little, on. You need a little help holding it. And yeah. this helps. They do, it and really they're especially because they're kind of weighted, mm -hmm. so they really just help hold it. Yeah, I really and like it. The thing is, though, if you find that you're really struggling yes. with it moving, it probably means you are pressing down too, too hard. hard. Okay, yep. and of course, when you look at your hands and the white knuckles, you got are the white up. knuckles yeah. going. Um, but I really feel like because I've I've had many people that's like, oh, it's really hard to move, and then I get down and I'm like. Seems to move fine to me. Yeah, it's because they're pressing pushing, down too hard. Pushing, pushing too yeah. hard. So yeah. maybe relax your shoulders. Do all your wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Lighter touch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Twinkle fingers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so great. Well, yeah, I can totally see that. You know, conquering any size quilt mm -hmm. is absolutely doable here. Absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well. Any other tips or tricks you oh, want to offer you know, for our stationary um, machines? You know what? I'm going to show stitching really oh, quick. Let's do that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Here we go. Because we wanted to talk about whether I was using oh, right. crews or not and what this looks like. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about the different modes of stitch regulation, kind and of I how you want to use there. them sort okay. of thing. Yeah. Perfect. So as I'm going, I'm going to 
put it back on regulated and it's it's just a touch screen and you just toggle you don't have mm -hmm. to touch the M to get the M you just touch M or R and it mm -hmm. toggles between okay and then you have the opportunity to choose whether you want it to end needle down or needle up Very nice. and if I want to I'm gonna always bring that bobbin thread up before I start mm -hmm. and you can do it two, one of two ways either tap the foot pedal which I I maybe I have a little bit of a lead foot so I'm not as comfortable with that <laughs> to, to make it do it it's just a tap to tap. make it do it okay mm -hmm. or I can just I've already chosen for it to be needle down if I just touch that needle down again it will do another half stitch okay nice. or if I hold that needle down mm -hmm. It will do a slow stitch if I wanted to oh, kind of do my locking that. stitch with that. There's that walking mm -hmm. stitch, yeah. Okay. So nice. Yeah. So now if I I don't want to be on four stitches, four inches stitches. No. Okay. I'm gonna we, put, we don't need to base. I'm gonna put it on eleven. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if I have already and I right off the top of my head I don't remember what manual speed I feel comfortable at but let's just see here let's take it off of baste okay and I might if I'm on my practice piece, I might first start with manual and see what feels comfortable yeah you move the speed you like and mm -hmm. we're going to either speed up or slow down the machine so that it gets the amount of stitches we want in that amount of time in, in manual okay? exactly yep yeah. so l l we're just going to see I'm trying 675 okay Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Six seventy-five. Six seventy-five. I, I think I would start slower if you were first starting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I know some people go. Oh yeah. Way higher than that. It all depends on okay. your comfort level. So six seventy-five is about. No, six seventy-five is okay. So I'm going to go to regulated, and uh -huh. I'm going to put my. I'm going to first try my my, cruise down really low. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, I'll try it on precision first so that okay. they can kind of see that oh, difference. Oh, the difference. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now I have it on 11 stitches per inch, regulated, and I am going to just start going. Mm -hmm. Now I can press go here mm -hmm. or I can touch there. Now so nice. when I press go from the screen, mm -hmm. then I, if I touch the foot pedal, it'll make it stop, which is nice because then you don't have to try to reach up. Yeah. That's, that's what people... You can keep your eyes get freaked out about yeah, okay yeah all right so I'm going to go there I'm in precision so it's it's on right now it's only going to stitch when I start moving okay so yeah. that's precision it's being very precise I see that okay yeah. now I'm going to put a little bit of cruise because okay. did you hear it? it you know it was reacting to me yeah 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 because you're moving the fabric. Because it was only it going when I told it to go. Exactly. Okay, so now we'll put it on a cruise. I'll put it on a low cruise. Okay. And so the only time the cruise kicks in is when I'm not moving. When okay. I'm. But you can see it's it's reacting to me, right? Mm hmm Exactly. So some people, you have to learn how to, you want to try to move as smoothly mm -hmm. as you can. Absolutely. Um, so some people aren't comfortable with that. They, like it makes them feel uncomfortable because when you move fast, it goes fast. So that's why I might want my cruise up a little bit. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm gonna put. Let's put it up to 600 okay. and see. So you can kind of hear it. Oh yeah. It's just kind of making use of the cruise that is comfortable. The the cruise is the speed that's comfortable, right? but then when I do, like we were talking, those big those, sweeping curves yeah. <laughs> that we're totally comfortable with, that stitch regulation kicks, kicks in, in so I don't get those extra big stitches And right you there. get that nice, beautiful stitch the so whole time. So I think that's um, a lot of people run into issues where they don't put their cruise up high enough. Right. Don't be, I mean, oh, like okay. we've said before, you don't want it to make you nervous. Right. If it's too high, if yeah. it makes you nervous to stitch. Slow it down. You have it too high. Yeah, go slower. But sometimes some people, they just need that extra cruise going to mm -hmm. kind of help, help them help them quilt smoother. Very good. That's a really good tip. That's yeah. a really good tip. Awesome. Well, okay. I think.
Have we pretty much? Are you going to pop that side I'm down? Pop it back down. I know, cause so easy to so do. So easy. So easy. I love it. Oh. Well, Gina, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so much fun to talk to you about yes, the Capri. I love the Capri. The insight table with the stitch regulation, it's just, it's so awesome. Yeah. So, well, we just want to say to all of you, thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram too. And don't forget to have fun quilting this month. Bye.